Hey guys, this is the middle grade book tag, and this is going to be pretty interesting because I can't remember the last time I read a, a middle grade book. <laughs> this is a chiefly YA fantasy thriller channel, but I definitely have read some middle grades, and they were pretty good. They are very lighthearted, some of them, and they are just good stress relievers because everything's sweet and innocent usually, sometimes, yes. So this video is going to require a lot of like thinking for me to try to activate the old remembering muscles. Now it's tied by the dear, the lovely, the amazing, the pretty, Spinelli Speaks, hey. And I will most likely fail this. Can you fail a tag? It will be done. History will be made here, folks. Casey will not be able to answer half of these questions, but we're gonna do it anyways, cause you'll never fail if you don't try. Did that even make sense? Yeah, it did. <laughs> not in this context, it didn't, but. <laughs> okay, first question. What is the last middle grade book you read? Let me do some thinking. This one. Lockdown, Escape from Furnace. I love this series to pieces. However, I am very sure it is listed as young adult. However, I put in the argument that it is middle grade based on the way it's written. It's a bit graphic, yes, but I think it's middle grade. Also, the characters are very young, 13, 14, but gruesome. This is chiefly about a boy named Alex, named after the author, that's sinful, a book writing sin, but it's okay, it's still a good book. In this world, if you commit murder at any age, no matter your reason, you're going to furnace the super ultra penitentiary that is under the earth, deep in the crust. You will never see the light of day again. You will be experimented on. There are these giant guards called black suits haunting the corners with their massive mutated dogs. The creepy scientist weezers with their creepy gas mask haunt the... I already used haunt, but oh well. Lurk through the shadows at night, taking sleeping victims from their bunk to do the worst of the worst of the experiments. Sometimes the inmates, the innocent inmates, turn into raging beasts. Sometimes they're just never seen again. And so we got one goal. We gotta escape. It's simple. It's violent. I loved it. With middle grade books, I do not need a character arc. This doesn't really. I just need fun. <laughs> Number two, what is a middle grade book someone read to you as a child? I don't think my parents read to me. Oh, that's depressing. Wait, my teacher did. I remember in fourth grade, Miss Houston, my teacher, she read to me a book called Measle and the Wart Monk? Warth Monk? Something like that. And like, she read it out loud to the class when we would sit in the circle. She would read this book and I was so into it. I think short premise, this kid, he lost his parents, so he's living with this creepy dude who turns out to be a wart monk, and whatever a wart monk is, weird things happen. But my teacher, she was reading this book, and for some reason she just like stopped reading it to the class, and I'm like, story time? Where's story time? And so I went up to her one day, and I'm like, Miss Houston, may I please read that book you didn't finish? And she's like, oh yeah, here you go. So she gave it to me, I read it, loved it, and there was like two more books in the series, so I read those two, and it was pretty good. I actually like still remember the scenes in my mind, because that's how much of an impression it made on me. Maybe I need to go to the library and reread them. Number three, what was your favorite middle grade book as a child? I'm just gonna do series because I can't remember the exact books I loved, but Magic School Bus, wait, no, Magic Treehouse, Diary of a Whippy Kid, Ranger's Apprentice, those were super good, and Goosebumps. Mm amazing. They fueled my fantasy needs and also the comedy needs in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which I still read today because they're just funny. What is your favorite middle grade book as an adult? It's going to be a tie between The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding. Kid has a demon stuffed inside of him. The demon's cranky all the time. So funny and it's set around Halloween so it has this like crisp autumn like atmosphere to it. Very funny. I loved it. The whole like plot of the book is to get the demon out of the kid but it was just fun those two together. I didn't want the demon to leave. The other book, Son of Slappy, Goosebumps, R.L. Stein. I love Slappy the Dummy. And this is like one of the books where he like kind of wins and that like never happens because you have to have a happy ending in a middle grade book. But no, he did good job in this book and I loved it. Who's your favorite middle grade author? Let's just do R.L. Stein, Goosebumps, keep at it. I love it. Have you guys seen the, the Goosebumps? TV show? I love that series. Still do. It's on Netflix, so I still watch it. I think my favorite episodes were, of course, Night of the Living Dummy 3, starring Slappy, and also the one about uh, Return of the Haunted Mask, I think that's what it was called. What middle grade book do you think should be required reading in school? Hmm. You know, I'm gonna switch this and say which book shouldn't be required reading? Junie B. Jones, because we don't need kids, like, learning how to be Junie B. Jones. She was, like, obnoxious. She did not listen to her parents. Kids should not be like Junie B. Jones, no matter how funny she was. What is your favorite middle grade book cover? 
man, I'm doing so good, but I can't, I don't want to use the books I've already said. You know what, Editor Casey, I want you just to Google best looking middle grade book covers and put it right there, okay? <laughs> Moving on. What is your favorite middle grade book screen adaptation? I already answered this, the Goosebumps TV show. It deserves an Oscar. I wish they would like reboot it, like do a new one. Like, they're redoing Twilight Zone, which was an amazing TV series in, like, the 60s. So we need to, like, reboot Goosebumps. Guys, mass filming really, like, wears your throat out. So I hope I really did not sound like a grumpy old frog throughout this entire video. <coughs> it's time for a water break. Guys, thank you so much for just being you. Amazing in every way. And I will see you guys next time. I am Casey, and you are, like, the luminescent, pearly glow of the moon. Yeah! Bye, y'all.